Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are gathered here today to dive into Seeking Sister Wife. But before we do, we have to remind you, please... Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions. Beatrice has a lot of those. <laughs> and so Rude. if you're so funny, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're down and ready to get into some polygamy talk, mm. welcome to this one. Yeah. And if you are down to trash talk with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do on the socials really helps us to grow. So thank you in advance. Oh, thank you. Now, before we dive into this, honey, yeah, I was up on the Reddits to Ooh, see like if they were are. trashing all those people in a hot tub. I'm sure they were. Because, you know, I watched the scene with the hot tub and I thought about all the fluids <sighs> And the heat and the bacteria. I got real grossed out. Yeah. So I went on the Reddits and they were talking about it. Yeah. And we will talk about it. But one post that I saw. Oh, God. Really kind of stood out to me. Oh, no. And it's a question that I think we should ask you. Oh. Yeah. You. Me. You are the resident lesbian. Oh, I'm the token lesbian. Carpet muncher. <laughs> Stop. Clam lover. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. So this post is entitled, Who Moves Faster? Lesbians <laughs> or Plural Families? As a queer poly oh. girly, it's hard to tell from this angle, but between the two, you haul will never want for business. And of course, we've all heard that lesbians fall in love very quickly. It's true. And if I do recall, <laughs> when you met my daughter, yeah. you were sprung, ung, 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 oh, and for so sure. was she. You guys got together and became official very quickly oh very quickly and then your daughter went and got her ring finger tattooed for me literally like a month after we started dating (laughs) after we made everything official she was in love with you and look eight years later though you guys are standing the test of time but like who does it faster lesbians or polygamists i feel like the polygamists take the cake yeah. honestly because these people are asking for commitment on the first or second date it's crazy we wait till the third you know what i mean Do like, you? Yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry take but some time. i feel like you were official within a week with my well, daughter well yeah but it did take me a little bit you were also very young though yeah we were 20 you were yeah you guys yeah. were little baby yeah. she was 20 yeah i thought she was older than well, that well 19 was, 20 yeah, yeah 19 or 20 yeah, yeah. okay well whatever so mm. we had to ask and that is a good question <laughs> and a good question it may made me laugh now before we get into discussing the episode do you have any takeaways yeah my major takeaway this week is that my favorite color is blue no is it why because i love blue exactly the way it is in every form (laughs) what about water and its many forms do you have a favorite there yeah the ocean because it's so deep like me (laughs) in this hot tub oh my God, I was cringing so deeply into my body that it became a kegel, which we call a kregel. Kregel. But I was really just like, is this what the dating scene is like out there? Is this how people have conversations? I was embarrassed. On their second date? Oh no! Yikes. Super weird. Somebody on Reddit called Jasmine a trailer trash Socrates. <laughs> And that's amazing like, no, it's, it's really mean Reddit. that's hilarious but i did laugh i mean because i don't know what she's trying to give but it's giving cringe uh, she thinks she's a very deep person like the color blue yeah <laughs> uh, my takeaway was i thought it was really interesting when nick quoted and also this is a spiritual thing a deep oh. thing but he quoted alistair crowley when he said do what thou wilt is the whole of the law and i'm like are we out here quoting the beast? Do you know who Alistair Crowley is? No. Oh, I think he's the founder of Thelema, which is a kind of magic CK. Oh. And I th- he was also a member of the Golden Dawn, which was also a magical group. Hmm. But um, very kind of a controversial person. And I thought that was so interesting that he said that on television so that those of us who know like picked up on it and it reminded me that I need to go to his YouTube channel and watch more of his videos because I'm wondering if that's what he's into and there's nothing wrong with that and I know actually a lot of people 
who are into that. Yeah. I've known a lot of people in my day, but I was just like, wow, hmm. interesting. That's interesting if he's into like occult magic type shit like that if he's also judging jasmine for being kind of eclectic and pagan and has she got oh, these goddess a really and stuff good point because yeah. um i think alistair crowley worked with archangels and angels cool. and guides definitely spirit guides and so i don't know why he would be judging jasmine for having kuan yin and oshun as spirit guides right yeah that doesn't make any sense interesting i thought it was interesting oh my gosh all right let's get into this episode we are on season five episode 12 entitled seeking common ground okay common yeah. ground i don't know what that's about all right well let's get into it well let's start with the merrifields because we missed them last week did we yeah i didn't miss I them miss at them all so much as soon as i see him i'm in a rage <laughs> I know. like my He's blood so pressure gross. did not miss garrick no well we meet them this week at the freaking airport yeah because they're picking up miriam who's flying out from michigan mm-hmm even though they haven't really talked to Natalia, it seems like. I don't know. But yeah, I guess Miriam mm-hmm. and Danielle have been talking online, like on the Facebooks or something. Yeah, I think that Miriam was the first to reach out to Danielle. And my impression was that it had to do with the show. Mm. Like she's reaching out as somebody watching the show to give Danielle support. Mm. And then it turns into kind of a conversation and an ultimate friendship. And then because Danielle is Garrick's wing woman, Mm -hmm. she passes Miriam off to Garrick and then he starts talking to her. Um, I really went into these scenes thinking I was going to think that Miriam was like corny AF and gross. Yeah. But I actually liked her. Yeah, me too. She seemed pretty rational, pretty reasonable. And I'm like, why are why are you here? Like, why are you spending the weekend with the Merrifields? I don't know. Maybe she's a clout goblin. Maybe she's wanting money if she's watching the show. And she's like, dang, they sent Roberta $10,000. Maybe I can get in on that. I don't know. She seemed pretty grounded to me. So it was a complete non sequitur. And I did not understand it. But here she is. She's in Colorado, honey. And they drive her over to Buena Vista mm-hmm. to their house. And this is kind of the first thing that I thought was... Why? <laughs> this is where your children live. Yeah. And good once point. again, we have this inappropriate exposure to what I would call your deviance. Yeah. Like just exposing your kids to yet another woman that Garrick just wants to fuck. Oh, yeah. He doesn't want to form a connection, not really. He just wants to make a commitment and fuck her and then discard her. And you're doing it in front of these kids again. I know. These people are the worst. They're really fucking terrible. And I thought it was weird how Miriam like greets Danielle's dad because he's there for some reason. She's like, oh, it's nice to finally meet you. I'm like, are you talking to her family? (laughs) Like you've only been talking to each other online for like a month. It's very strange to Mm me. I don't know. To me, it kind of felt like they were only bringing Miriam on to show like, yeah, no, I'm not just like fucking women in Brazil. I'm oh. I'm also into American chicks because this is what they did with um, Roberta. He after they flew back from Brazil or whatever, visiting Roberta, he went on another date with some other American chippy mm. and it was filmed. It was like last season or whatever. And it was the same kind of thing. And I'm just like, what? what is this? Oh, so some kind of a shield. So he doesn't look like he's such a predator, yeah. a passport predator. Or a sex pest. Yeah. A sex pest. Yeah. I don't know. She just, Miriam seemed to have a good head on her shoulders. And, and I actually kind of liked her. And when we get to the scene where Danielle's brother and sister-in-law come over, like we just see them asking her questions, wanting to know more about her. And I thought Miriam handled herself really well. Oh, totally. Asking questions that you would think Danielle and Garrick would have asked. But like when they get to the subject of religion... <laughs> Which is something you and I had talked about last week. Yeah. Like, why, Garrick, are you looking for somebody in a, in a different religion? Like, if this is about your religion and your faith and your God, like, that didn't make sense to me. And so the sister, what's her name? Sister-in-law? Samantha. So Samantha asks about that and about Miriam ultimately converting to Christianity. And Miriam's like, oh, mm, I have no plans to not convert at all. to Christianity. And then they pan to Garrick and his dumb potato head with his mouth open mouth breather like he's like what she's not gonna convert to christianity 
well then all these white people are like we don't even know anything about islam Mm -hmm. like is it similar to christianity what do you guys believe i'm like how do you guys not fucking know (laughs) how are you so ignorant that you don't even know about another religion oh there are so many people i know have no idea and they're plugged into their local evangelical literalist church and they probably i mean if you're an evangelical or literalist christian you probably think every other religion including catholicism is demonic right and is th- this is why i'm asking the question because if this is the religion you're coming out of like why are we dating miriam unless all it is about is fucking because it is all about it's fucking. so transparent and is yeah. that what samantha's trying to get to a little bit okay i, I mean th- it seems like it seems like this is what's frustrating to me is because samantha and her talking head she's like yeah it's kind of weird seeing them practice polygamy IRL because normally they just go on vacations and Garrick fucks another chick and then they come back and then they ghost the chick and they don't talk to her anymore. So it seems a little weird, but it's cool to see them in their element. But I'm like, okay, you're saying this in your talking head. Are you saying this to them? Is Mm. anybody calling it out for what it is in this family? Or are we all just accepting that it's normal that they go and fly to Brazil for or that Garrick goes to Brazil for six weeks fucks another chippy while his prego wife is at home with their house and their business and the kids like it's just so weird i mean her brother seems pretty growly a little bit (laughs) and um i would have to think that he has said this to danielle and samantha seems pretty direct and very straightforward so i would hope they're having side conversations but to what end i mean danielle wants to do this yeah danielle is facilitating this yeah she's the one who is sourcing all of these women for garrick so like she's never going to listen to you no so yeah expose him on tv for being (laughs) weirdos it's so bizarre and danielle's heavy with child Mm -hmm. doing all of this and she's like crying already when miriam's describing how she thinks that danielle's genuine to samantha and sam because they're like what do you like about the maryfields oh they're genuine I like them. I think they're really cool. And Danielle starts crying. Like, oh my God, thank you. Because she's been so rejected by Natalia. And she hasn't been able to make a connection with these other Brazilian women. So finally, (laughs) someone sees me for who I am. Will she kiss me though? Yeah. Can I eat her box? Do you think she's into it? I think she's got a hardcore crush on Miriam. It's really weird. That was my vibe because when Danielle and Miriam go to lunch together, Garrick was supposed to come, but he's got a migraine, so he's at home. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not to like shit on people who have I migraines. I hate him so much. But I hate, I hate him, him yeah. so much. Anyway, Danielle and Miriam go on their little date and Danielle is so she's like acting like ashley sherwood like got a big smile on her face like super like playing with her hair like oh my god laughing at everything Mm. miriam says so you're thinking it's kind of flirty and she's attracted to miriam because i didn't think miriam was giving those vibes at all i thought she was being very genuine i think she's open to a friendship with danielle but i didn't think she was into her that way but you think danielle is with her yeah and like i don't know some of the things miriam was saying especially during this lunch like she's like telling danielle yeah i want to take things slow i don't want to be pressured into anything sexually with you guys like she says it plural and i'm like mm-hmm. do you think with that you it's guys be? Yeah. did she say you guys yeah and then she said garrick she's like oh. and then i don't want garrick to pressure me sexually and i'm like that's a weird thing to say i didn't even catch that yeah i thought she was directing all of the pump the brakes stuff toward garrick well and then she called danielle cute and i know it was like in the context of like Mm. oh i think danielle was asking like what do you say when we have our food i don't know something right i bless the food yeah Mm -hmm. and uh miriam was like that's that's so cute oh my god you're so cute uh I'm just like, that's weird. It just, they all give me weird Mm -hmm. vibes. It seems like Danielle wants a little cookie. She wants a little something, something. And they're hiding behind like Christianity because, you know, being gay is wrong. Which makes her a predator if that's her real intention i was just like danielle um so weird shut your mouth (laughs) i'm just like they're they're both mouth breathers it's not just garrick who is unconscious and a cro-magnon person it's also danielle and i mean danielle and i'm not going to i and i know that i'm inappropriate sometimes and so i'm going to censor myself no it's not okay because i want to say something about her mouth and i'm not going to do it but like at least shut it shut your mouth so i'm not staring into the void of your fucking gaping mouth shut your mouth i know I just like she's so off putting to me. Yeah. I told you like because I WhatsApped you. I'm like this yeah. chick's repugnant. <laughs> she is. She's repugnant. She's so creepy. Mouth. Shut your mouth. 
super fucking weird man and even like miriam says i think it was at this lunch like you guys move really fast for me like we, let's just take it slow she mentions that danielle told miriam that she loves her after like a month of talking and miriam's like that's kind of weird but like i get it like i i know it's just because you're genuine people and her heart is open and i really appreciate that but i'm also concerned for my bodily safety Crazy. make sure the cameras stay in the house yeah seriously mm-hmm. very freaking weird these people she also asked danielle if they would be willing to give up pork yeah which you would never be able to you love pork too much if i was doing it for me me <laughs> If would it was you? important to meet me, yeah, I would. I mean, I, w- I would. Without wow. it, without a second thought, I would give it up. Wow. I yeah. wouldn't. You wouldn't? You wouldn't? <laughs> no, I probably would. If it was important to your I'd wife, you'd know it. that you, you would bitch about it. And you'd go out and you'd get some bacon on your totally. burger. Totally, yeah. But I would, but Danielle doesn't seem like she wants to. She's like, yeah. um, you're asking me to give up bacon? Like, I do not think so. I don't <laughs> see a world where. I could possibly do that. These people, I can't. Like, they literally know nothing about Islam. It's so crazy. And then you're going to have this chippy in your house Mm -hmm. as a potential sister wife. Like, get out of here. They're super weird to me. And then after Miriam tells Danielle, like, I kind of want to take things slow. I don't want to be pressured into having sex with your weird husband. (laughs) Danielle in her talking head is like, yeah, I'm kind of happy about that, you know, because I feel like we do move fast. But at the same time, I'm bummed about it because I wish we could move fast because I love Miriam so much. Right. But then if Miriam actually did acquiesce and agree to move fast, Danielle would most certainly do something to sabotage it. You think so? I ab- Absolutely. Oh would she do something God. to sabotage it? Because she is, whether consciously or subconsciously, not into Garrick fucking other women. She's mm. jealous. Even she's doing she's it for Garrick. Heavy with child. I feel like now that she's... Especially. Well, now that she's got the prego, like, I feel like she's like, oh, I'm fine because my man gave me a baby. So he loves me. So Girl, it's fine. I don't know. Don't I feel ask like she's me to Delulu. explain Danielle Merrifield. Like, she's <laughs> crazy and something's diabolically wrong with her and yeah. Garrick. And I'm like, Miriam, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? I am definitely wondering about your intention because you don't seem to be chasing fame necessarily. Yeah. Again, she's giving me kind of a faith-based life and she's very family-oriented, very mm-hmm. connected to her culture. So why are you here with these translucent people? I don't know. And she even called Garrick attractive. She's like, he's so handsome. I love his beautiful blue eyes. And I'm like, are we looking at the same person? <laughs> are, we, are we in the same <laughs> are we in the same room? I, I don't know. understand that at all. I, I don't know. I really can't see it. He's disgusting. And we do see in the preview that he's being too touchy. He's pawing at her again and she's not having it. And not I think she says all. something that makes him upset. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait to see yes. it. Me too. Oh. Speaking of repulsive people, next we have the Ryans, (laughs) namely Justin. (laughs) And this dope (laughs) takes Yari on a solo date because he's like, I need to, you know, get her out of her shell. We need to talk more. And they go to another Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? Yes. I I feel uh, like it's a little racist. A little little racist coded. Like, well, she's Mexican, so she probably just wants to eat nachos or (laughs) something, right? Let's just do that again. And he starts using, like, Spanish words. Like, he said mañana to her. And I'm like, can we we not do this? (laughs) Like, what are we doing? (laughs) Right. Super fucking weird, but whatever. Can I just say something so inappropriate about Yari? I just don't believe she's 42 oh, really i do not she's older she, yes oh. she's giving 52 God. she's giving <laughs> the next decade over she's Stop. giving i'm hiding all of my aging behind my curls my oh. robin brown tight curls but i'm just like you're not 42 later i mean something's weird about her a little Come bit on. she would have to be weird to be justin. on this date with justin <laughs> again super bizarre and this is where they're having the conversation about like sharing each other like sharing justin specifically and yari's like well i don't want to share my man i i want my man all to myself i don't want becky's weird ass around Mm -hmm. you want to be with me only and justin's like no that's not how it works it's not what polygamy is but yari doesn't understand no she's new to this and she's not looking up polygamy on the internet no and she i think has like a good cautious attitude and she's like we don't even speak spend time now though like I don't see you often so how am I supposed to know if this is something that's going to work for me and so I think what she's actually asking for I'm not sure if she did it in the right way is she's asking for more exposure to Justin Mm -hmm. more time to see if it's even something she'd be able to do but all he's kind of hearing is okay she wants time with me only 
and not Becky. And yeah. that's not going to work. Yeah. And then he tries to justify it like, oh, well, the last girl that I was fucking, she had surgery and I was there for her. And Yari's like, really, though? Are you going to be like, how much time is there in a day when mm-hmm. you're working all the time and then all of your free time is with Becky and your children? Right. Because I think they still have kids at home, actually, just right. like the Mary Fields. But Justin's like, yeah, no, I- I'll make sure I will spend my time equally because I'm Cody Brown. Don't worry. I'm not going to favor <laughs> anybody. Right, right. You're my priority. And then Yari's like, no, I feel like Becky's your priority. And appropriately so. Duh. And also Justin is here on this state for the express purpose of getting a commitment out of her. Yeah. We have another polygamist like fucking the Sherwoods. Like all of these people, Nick, every single one of them who are just on this timeline trying to get these women to give them a commitment and Yari's like I don't even know you you haven't met my child probably we've only been to three Mexican restaurants (laughs) you don't know anything about me I need more time I need more dates but that's it Justin's like I'm done well and Justin in his talking head like he thinks that we're all stupid is like well I'm not asking for a commitment from her I'm just asking from a commitment for some from somebody so yeah, he's going to go date around. It could be her or anybody exactly. else. <laughs> so why would Yari want to do that, Justin? It's so weird. You absolute boob. They all hide behind the guise of like commitment and we we promise to be together. It's not just sexual, but it is. Mm-hmm. Like we say every single episode, like just say you want to fuck. <laughs> That's all it is. Yep. But he can't. And he doesn't tell her the truth in this conversation. Mm-hmm. He tells us, he tells the camera what he really wants to hear from her. But like when she's trying to explain herself, he doesn't counter and say, well, it is important to me that we have a commitment first and then we can spend more time together. Like he says nothing. He's the guy who waits in the car while Becky does everything for him. Yep. He's a total loser. Yeah, he's a dud. He is such Get a him dud. off the TV. Why are they on this show? They're the worst couple on this show. They're so boring and so creepy. I like don't want to see them ever anymore. again. And then last but not least, we have the Davis family. And this was kind of the meat of the episode. Honey. Oh, my God. Jasmine's coming over for a sleepover. None of these women can dress for their body types. (laughs) And I'm not talking about their body types as a portly woman myself who is accustomed to eating pastries and drinking wine. I'm not coming for nobody. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if you're going to have some soft parts on your body, going to have a marsupial fucking pouch, (laughs) dress accordingly. Damn. Somebody help these women because some of these women are awfully young and nobody has ever taught them how to dress or talk. No. Or talk. No. As we shall see when we get into that soup of a hot tub. Girl, this whole interaction with this whole family, this just proved to me that all these women are fucking each other. Oh, yeah. They are all polyamorous. And that's fine. Get freaky in your 12 foot bed. Feels like the first time they're actually kind of saying it out loud. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, Or kind of just alluding to it because Jasmine comes over. They have a little charcuterie board (laughs) and they're all kind of talking. and, And Jasmine asks, you know, what's the plan? And April, being the madam of the family, she's like, <laughs> well, I thought we could uh, get a little freaky in the hot tub. And then, you know, you could sleep in our 12 foot bed if you want. Uh, wink. These people are just gross to me. And knowing that these women are out here, not just looking for Nick, but also looking for a woman for themselves. I mean, hey, live and let live. Sure. I'm not going to shame you. I mean, I just did. I'm, I'm shaming you. M- much more yeah. today. But I'm just like, this is gross. And the way they were describing it was super freaking weird. Like they were talking about how they don't want to have a hierarchy in their arrangement. So that's why all the women marry each other and they have to find a wife for Danielle to marry so that way it's balanced and equal. And I'm like, but Danielle doesn't seem like she wants to marry a wife right now or marry a woman right now. Why does it need to be balanced and equal? Why can't it just be this? Because it was just last season that you got this together. Why can't we just be in this for now? Why do we have to look for somebody else? And what are you talking about a balance when everybody has a specific orbit? Which means that some Mm -hmm. people are farther away from the sun, aka Nick, and they ain't getting enough time in the boom boom room. It just seems super weird to me. Very predatory. So which one do we think is not getting the same same amount of time in the boom boom room let's say it at the same time three two one okay so three two one danielle. april oh danielle april huh april yeah mm, why do you think april she's long in the tooth 
<laughs> He's been with her for quite some time. Well, Danielle's the newest girl other than Jasmine. Mm-hmm. And when he came home from his date with Jasmine, he took Danielle up into the boom boom room. Only to she's make young. her feel better. She's got a sex drive. <laughs> April looks like she's what in her late 30s. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's April. Mm, interesting. I mean, I used to think it was April, but after this episode, he was loving up on her. He was kissing mm-hmm. her. He was caressing her thigh like Garrick yep. Merrifield. So I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe they get a lot of boom boom. Slithering around in that hot tub talking about spiders baby oh girl that was interesting (laughs) that was really interesting because the female spiders are so much bigger (laughs) than men and i'm like those girls are beautiful don't get me wrong they're beautiful yeah I just wish they would dress more appropriately for their voluptuous frames. That's sure. all I'm saying. I wish they would leave Nick because I don't see what they see in this this crusty, dusty man. I, I'm sorry. He is so fucking creepy to me. Especially in this hot tub because he's like making his rounds to all the women. Uh, he's like so cuddling gross. up on April and kissing her in front uh-huh. of everybody. Uh-huh. Then he goes over to Danielle, swims over, paddles over to Danielle, kisses her, touches her titties a little bit. Ew. Then when they get out of the hot tub, he's grabbing Jennifer's ass. He's kissing uh, Jasmine, Jasmine on the cheek and she looked uncomfortable. She did look uncomfortable. So we have to talk about that a little yes, bit too please. because we're talking about motivations here, like whether people are actually attracted in an authentic way to this lifestyle or are we just seeing people trying to do tv and jasmine with her bloviating and her pontification she's just there to be on television and she has no desire whatsoever for nick and his crusty slimy ass i mean it seems like it but then she's saying things in her talking head that i think maybe tlc is paying her to say but which is like oh i was totally looking for a situation like this because i need more help with my kid or whatever and i'm like girl I don't know if you want this. <laughs> I don't know why like you would you don't want, this. want this. This is super weird. And wasn't there some commentary either to the camera or like later when they were on the couch? Because when Jasmine is talking about the color blue and how much she loves it <laughs> yeah. and all the layers to blue and, and all water. the significance and the symbolism of blue, yeah. <laughs> we have that um, scene on the couch with the rest of them and uh, Danielle's like uh, don't ask me my favorite color when I'm in the hot tub ready to fucking get down I mean that's what it seemed is like what it sounded like she was saying like I'm here to party arty arty yeah I'm here to get my groove on and my box it <laughs> and so I don't want to be talking about the ocean and the color blue because they wanted to have a little bit of an orgy or something that's what it fucking seemed right? like right is it just us? I mean, I don't know. Maybe we're so depraved that we think that this is what they do. But I don't know. It seemed like they were all drinking. I feel They're like all they all the said it. I they mean, all laughed when Danielle said it. They all agreed. Yeah. And then they go and sleep in the bed. Jasmine agrees to sleep in a 12-foot bed with these people she doesn't even know. That's so weird to me. That's I mean, I don't want to be judgy. I mean, I'm going to be judgy. Let live. I, I just think that's like, fucking I, weird. It could never be me. No. Could never be me. Absolutely but not. But like, if you're into it, but like the fact is she's not into it. Danielle's not into it no. because we see that she doesn't even stay in the bed. She's going to leave the basement orgy room. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, ugh, why, girl? Why put yourself through that? It's a really bad look on national television. For Danielle or Jasmine? Yes. Both. <laughs> but for Jasmine. I mean Jasmine, yeah. but like for all of them, obviously. Maybe Jasmine needs the money. I don't know. But I'm like, how much money paid. can it be? It's TLC season one for her. For she's real. getting what? I don't know, of fifteen hundred in appearance <laughs> yeah. each time. So maybe she's gonna walk away from this season with four thousand dollars that is then taxed by Uncle Sam. She's gonna make two thousand dollars. Girl, I don't know. Maybe we're reading her wrong. Maybe she is genuinely attracted to Nick. Maybe she wants she's not. that big old We Nick. all can see that she's not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. she is genuinely attracted to the idea of the lifestyle maybe she's and attracted she wants to danielle to give it the old college try but it just doesn't fit it doesn't feel no. right it feels very awkward and so if she continues to try to be with them i mean i'll be like please stop i mean it's so cringe honestly and i don't think nick likes it i don't think they like it what do you mean? Well, Nick seems to laugh at her. They seem oh, to yeah. judge her for the way that she talks and the things that she says. I think Nick finds her odd, which is wild. Yeah. So I just, I don't think Nick's going to ultimately want to be with her long term. Probably not. And maybe he'll want to hit it 
And yeah. then they'll be like, oh, no. I mean, they did say, the producers asked, is there any rules for this arrangement? And that's when Nick made that comment, that Aleister Crowley comment, like, no, but we're going to hold sex off the table during this weekend, during the sleepover, because we all agreed to it. I'm like, okay, ew. I mean, it's the most unappealing orgy idea that I've ever <laughs> heard of or had to think of. Like, when I sit here having to imagine those particular people in an orgy i'm just like get hey, me out of here i'm like you know whatever gets your your rocks going know, that's great but for i'm you. just scandalized I just by don't the think entire about it. idea oh what young people are doing these days I, is this something you did when you no, were younger and free absolutely not orgies and whatnot threesomes and such absolutely not my daughter-in-law is a prude yeah you i'm, I'm a very a much a prude yeah a prude yeah but i'm just like okay get your groove on look man that, that's cool but Ew. And like when they were judging her, I thought it was really lame because they were judging her hardcore for her lamb's blood comment or whatever because uh, they were talking about food allergies or something. And she's like, Yeah, I can't have lamb. And they're like, Well, why? You ask the question why and she explained it. And then you laugh at her for her answer and be like, And oh, she's so fucking weird for well, talking about really lamb's blood. Well, it is really macabre. It is a really macabre story to tell when you're having a group date. You asked. About lamb's blood splashing up on you and giving you a fucking rash because maybe you're demonic. They asked. The lamb symbolizes Jesus touching your skin and she's breaking out in some sort of an inflammatory (laughs) rash. But I'm like, it's a weird story to tell. Just say, yeah, I I can't tolerate it. Or yeah, I get a rash. (laughs) I don't need to know this. It's It was very very strange. This whole thing was strange. It's very weird. They're all strange people, though. That's like my thing. It's like Nick. Nick, Danielle, Jennifer, April, y'all are fucking weirdos. And then you want to judge this other weirdo that wants to, well, is acting like she wants to be a part of your wolf pack. Like, I don't know, like maybe (laughs) chill out a little bit. Well, it begs the question, Beatrice, like, can we think of even one example of a successful polygamist in modernity? Like you can go back to King David and we can talk about the Bible. I don't care. But like in modern times, Is there an example of a polygamist family that works that's not just occupied by deviants and fetishists and misogynists and sexists and causes suffering to the women? I mean, I guess Nick is not causing suffering to those women. I guess not, but I don't know. I don't think polygamy in general works. Like as traditional polygamy where like the man's the only one that gets to fuck around. I don't think that works. I think polyamory can work. I'm going to judge you for it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. not. I mean, like, whatever you want to do, I think polyamory can work if, like, everybody communicates and everybody's happy. We all have agreements. We know what we're doing and how we're doing it. Everybody's getting their box eight. Where that works. That's totally fine. I think that works. But polygamy? No, Mm -hmm. I don't think it ever works. I don't think it's ever beneficial. I think there's always jealousy. I think there's always insecurity. The men are the only ones Mm -hmm. that really benefit from it. I fail to see how the women benefit, especially in the Davis family. Well, and you hear Justin say, yeah, no, I would never let my wife be with another man that would never fly with me. And I'm like, like, okay, but like, you're not doing this for a faith-based reason because you haven't spoken about it. I don't know why you're doing this other than to be a swinger like you have talked about before, but like- swingers. That's just misogynistic and sexist, and it's Mm -hmm. so fucking oppressive to women. Yeah. Although, obviously, Miriam has agency over her body. Yeah. Yari has agency to say yes or no. So these women have a choice, but I'm like, why would they ever make this choice to be with these people? I don't know, because I'm just like, they're these men are not attractive in the slightest. In the least. Like, none of them. Not even a modicum of attraction in any of them. Not Garrick. Not anybody. Not Justin. No. Absolutely. Especially not Justin. He's such a dud. He's so old. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm just like... I feel like he's younger than me, though, so... (laughs) Well, but he acts like such an old, like, creepy man. You know what I mean? He goes to the gym, bro. Oh, my God. He's the old... Do you work out? He's the old, creepy guy at the Planet Fitness that's staring at all the young chippies Mm -hmm. in their little short shorts, and he's like, "Mm, oh, yeah. Yeah. Get married. Oh. <laughs> no, I'll make a commitment right now. I'm ready to go. I like that you work out. You look fit. Yeah. Ew. Ew, that's that's what Justin. It is definitely gross. giving that. Yes, yes, and yes. And even Nick, I'm like, there's nothing. You about offer you. nothing. You don't work. You don't even work. What do you do but make YouTube videos about soulmates and fuck? and take money from women uh, yeah. who pay your way? That's what do it. you do? He smokes weed all day. What do you bring to the table? 
You're not physically attractive. I'm sorry. No. I hate to be the one to break it to everybody. I know we're in a dumpster having a good time, but you are not attractive, sir. No, not at all. When he smiles, he does this weird like tick. I'm sorry. We're talking about mouths and we're body <laughs> shaming, but I'm going to body shame. Okay. Okay. But he smiles and he does this weird thing. He's like, <laughs> Super weird. Have you noticed I, no, that? No, I have not. You'll have to go back Do and it look. again. <laughs> that's that's very strange. It's super fucking weird. Yeah, that's actually very strange. Yeah, watch it next time. He does it every time when he's like trying to be funny and stuff. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oddballs. I all can't. Of them. Yeah. And then we have the preview. Yes. Justin is downloading Becky about his date with Yari and mm. Becky seems all pissed off that Yari doesn't want to share him. And I'm like, and doesn't want anything to do with her in particular. Because you're fucking gross and Yeah, creepy. you both are very disgusting. <laughs> and you're both like culty yeah. and in a cult. Yeah. And no, nobody wants you. No. Not Don't come back next season, please. Please. And then we have Natalia on her Zoom call. This is the preview we've been seeing for a few right. weeks, which is that Garrick and Danielle moved back and haven't talked to her for a few months. And then we have Garrick petting miriam's leg and she's super uncomfortable with, about it and she's like you better watch it and he's like what yeah why, why can't i molest you yeah I, I i'm very interested to see how miriam handles that and you would think that she was trying to put danielle on notice in this episode when they were at the restaurant mm. she was trying to tell danielle like the only thing i really need is like slow your roll like I need time I want to get to know y'all like and so I don't want to go too fast you would think Danielle would go back to Garrick and say hey just be careful mm -mm. like if you really want this to work this is how you approach it but it doesn't feel like she did that and or Garrick doesn't fucking care I, I feel like he doesn't fucking care and I wonder if she was saying that Miriam was saying that to Danielle because maybe in her talks with Garrick like already over the DMs he's already sending dick pics and shit or sending oh, no, God. pictures of him and his wife beater like, oh for sure but I mean maybe even you. that day like that 24 hours that she's been there he's already totally team too much he's yeah. already touching her too much and being a gross pervy sex pest Ugh, disgusting yeah. indeed and then we have Jasmine who is sleeping in the big 12 foot bed with everybody and Danielle is not happy about it even though she agreed Why? to it. Why, Danielle? Open your fucking mouth. I mean, seriously. I mean, Nick kept you back in the hot tub soup, body parts soup, to ask you if you were okay with what was happening, and you said that you were okay with it. Yeah. And so why now do you have a problem with it? Like, shut up. I know. This storyline is dumb. This is how she was last season, too. Yeah. Just like it's very exhausting. back and forth. I don't know if it's like produced or whatever because she's so young, or maybe she's just dumb. But I'm like, girl, you have your life ahead of you. Yeah, you don't need to don't do marry those. some random trash bag from Please. fucking Grand Junction. That's so judgy. I mean, sorry. But it's true. <laughs> you called her the white trash Socrates. I didn't. Reddit did. I'm you just were relating the it. raccoon message. I'm just did, 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 <laughs> raccoon missive. That's I'm all. I'm just saying. It's like Danielle, leave while you can. <laughs> oh my God, this is great. This is a great show. I told you we man. need more shows like this. So good on TLC. I am enjoying myself quite Me a bit too. Well, is there anything else that we should say to these beautiful raccoons before we leave, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! And if you're watching on YouTube, please like our videos and subscribe. Thank we, you. We will be back later this week to talk VPR reunion and The Valley, which is looking pretty crazy this yeah. week. The Valley is going to get even better. So until then... Please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out.